Hey, this is Mason, Senior Product Expert here at Fizzcom. In this workflow video, I'll show you how you can take a series of rough thumbnail sketches and create multiple variations within the Fizzcom workbench. And then going ahead, we're going to take one of those generations and then further developing it with the various 2D Studio workflows, as well as explore turnaround views and animations to create a character orthographic sheet similar to the ones that you would find in most concept art productions. All right, so to start things off, we have a series of thumbnail sketches that I've made that kind of explore a character design that is sort of wearing these tactical jackets, uh, sort of future military-esque um, tactical gear that I'm thinking about. And so normally I would suggest having, you know, if you have one sketch that you want to have it on a full canvas by itself. But for this workflow, we're actually going to start really rough at the beginning and kind of letting Vizcom help us design as we go. So by having all eight of these in a lineup and then generating within the workbench, I can then explore not only just like one design at a time, right? I now have eight different silhouettes that I can then, once I click on generate, I'm going to give eight a whole lineup of characters that I can see side by sides and they're all going to be pretty consistent given the same sort of prompt. So once I do that, you can kind of see how I get all of these different variations and quickly I have a whole list of different, you know, ideas or, you know, areas I want to dive into. So if you do have a couple of like different thumbnails, you know, if you want to arrange, you know, four, eight, or even like even more than that, then that's definitely a worthwhile uh, way to work where you kind of have congregate everything on one canvas. Now, the one thing I will say as a caveat is that once you do do that, what you're going to find is that each individual character or piece of element itself is going to be pretty low resolution. So that's kind of where after I do my initial exploration, right? Once I go through the workbench, I see a lineup that I particularly like with whatever palette I've made. I think this one is design sketch. I go ahead and use the rectangular in painting tool. And by doing that, I just create a clean, you know, rectangle selection around the character. And I'm going to copy that image onto my clipboard, bring it out onto Vizcom and create a new canvas just for that character. I'm going to go ahead and select the enhance tool on the top right in the star icon. You'll see this little icon, this tool rather that says enhance. Once I click that, Vizcom will spin up a couple seconds and then I'll go ahead and upscale the image. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Vizcom to take my grainy sort of thumbnail ideation or rendering that I have for my rough thumbnail sketch and creating a higher res version. So this is exactly what I want. You know, I kind of, I like how it came out It even added in some of the facial details. And then right after that, what I'm going to do is start exploring you know all my favorite workflows within viscom so as you know i really love the reference image material workflow uh, what i want to do is i found this reference image on pinterest of like this guy wearing this really cool jacket and kind of fits within the theme that i'm trying to explore with this character so i go ahead and leverage that workflow but i first want to as well preserve the face so let's say if i want to keep the head or like the face the character the same I'm going to go ahead and make sure to select his head area and then invert that selection to select everything else so that essentially I'm making a mask. Whatever is in outside of this head or facial area is the only area that's going to be affected by the generation. So the head itself won't be regenerated as that doesn't need to be regenerated at this point. I want to keep it consistent. So then I select everything outside. I select the reference material workflow and then I let it run and I can get some really cool results right off the get go. Perfect. So once I have that, now I have my really, now I have the basis. Now this is where we can start getting into how we can, you know, have this character do a T pose, how we can explore different animations or poses with this character. So what I'm doing is once I go out into the workbench, I'll go ahead and attach an animate node and I'm just going to tell this character uh, to raise their arms. And what do I mean by telling them to raise their arms? What I'm actually saying is I want to tell the character to 
initiate a T pose from where he's at. Now you can write in the words, you know, character doing a T pose. I found and within Vizcom it works 50-50 sometimes depending on if your po if your character is already in a like sort of dynamic pose already, it might not work as well. You might not get like the generations you're looking for. So I simply just go, you know, especially if it's front facing, something like, you know, character raising their arm. And then you'll see that the character, they're gonna raise their arm all the way up uh, right above their ear. And so what I wanna do is once I have this animation, after a couple of tries, I'll go ahead and full screen that animation and select the frame that I want. And there's actually a button that captures the frame of whatever part of the video you have scrubbed. So I'm gonna scrub to that part press capture frame on the bottom right and it will create a new 2d image of that single frame onto the workbench directly and what can i do after this if i'm looking to create a fully orthographic view i'm going to use the turntable effect within viscom's animation tool suite to then have the character rotate within this static pose and so once I do that, I'll have a front view, a side view. I can have as many different views as I wish at that point because this character is now going to do a full 360 degree rotation while keeping consistent to whatever input image we do have. So I give these animations a couple of tries and I actually go ahead and animate just on his regular, you know, neutral front pose that we initially had just so I can get some more variations and if I wanted to use that as a basis for my orthographics. So just playing around with different ideas. The next part is uh, actually taking that neutral stance and let's say I want him to do a more dynamic pose. I can have him, you know, subtly shift into like a three quarters pose and just makes for, you know, when I'm doing the presentation or uh, arranging everything on a canvas that I'll have like this one pose that's kind of like three quarters looking at the screen and then I'll have all the orthographic flat views next to it. From this uh, three quarters pose I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, I want the full head by itself isolated so that I can then also do an orthographic of that. So I'll go ahead drill down into the image itself and then do the same thing where I'm selecting the rectangular in painting tool and cropping that section out and then I'm going to post it in another canvas all by itself and go through the same steps that we just did earlier. So once I post it there, I'll enhance it. Once I get the enhancement so it's not a blurry mess, then I'll go ahead and run a cyber cell so that I can get less of a realistic person or whatever there is and then keep it within that stylized realm. So now I'll have a sort of stylized head portrait. And then as finishing step, I'll go ahead and do a turntable of that. So now I'll have the orthographic front view, three quarters view, side view, back view, whatever views I need. So at this point, I've laid out all my different views on the canvas and I'll go ahead and export them out as PNGs where I can then take all these different views and import them into Photoshop. And within Photoshop, I'll go ahead and arrange them into an orthographic turnaround sheet and then start cleaning up some of the minor inconsistencies uh, from the generated Viscom animations. So what normally would be a time consuming process, Viscom really accelerates the ability to create multiple different angles of a view from my initial front view design. So uh, give this a try on your next project and help create your ideas faster with Viscom.